all right, all right. So I went off, uh, well, it's already two o'clock. I guess it was around noon. That's been running real slow today, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, saw this on Craigslist and I was lucky enough to be the first one to grab it. But uh, I went by and I don't know if it's a lady or a guy or whatever, they never came out of their house, but uh, I just went in the driveway, picked it up. But they had a snapper rear engine snapper and they said hey it it's old but it just needs some tweaking right and that's all i know about it but here's what i got all right so this is the snapper 1438 h so it's a 14 horsepower engine 38 inch cut and h is hydrostatic and they're calling it the snapper hydro now it looks pretty oily and stuff over here by the engine but everything else seemed to be okay uh, key was in it. It's the battery's got power, but you can see it's real hard to turn over. You can hear that. Um, what else? Everything else looks really good. It's just this tire back here, the the right rear. I know it does not hold air. It held enough for me to to get it back here, but I'm sure it'll be flat here in the next couple of hours. Uh, it is missing the little chute there. No big deal. Uh, everything up here looks great, right? Everything on the front looks good. It's it, it steered really well. It was easy to push around. They put some blocks up here, I guess, to even out the seat. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably springs that are supposed to be there, and uh, so it'll give you a cushiony ride. I have not looked at the blades yet. I've just been looking on the outside, just like this. But uh, but yeah, everything's there. Everything looks good. The tank looks good. It's just like a lot of oil has gone around. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, shit, that's a lot of oil. Is it stopping here? Or is it going all the way up? Oh, man. So this thing might be just flooded with oil. It's leaking out all over the place. And maybe that's why it's so hard to turn over. I bet we have a case of hydrolock here. Maybe I'll uh, take the spark plug off and see if any crap comes out of it. Drain some of the oil out of it and see what happens. Let's see. The oil drain. Yep, yeah, there it is. All right. Yeah, I don't know what year this is. 14 and a half horsepower. Let's see. Here's the uh, info on the engine. Code, so it's a 2001, September 19th, 2001, so it's not that old. Well, I guess 19 years old, but uh, but it's all got all the modern conveniences, overhead valve engine, uh, hydrostatic drive, but it still has that classic snapper rear engine look, doesn't it? I think they're kind of cool. But first things first, let me uh, pull that spark plug out, see what it looks like. Let's see what we got. Maybe the spark plug will tell the tale. Nope, it looks pretty dry. And I think I'm going to crank it over. Well, it's actually pretty wet. I tipped it over and you can see my fingers drowning here. So, let me get you out of the way. Maybe somewhere over here. Let's see if anything spews out of there. Let's 
definitely turning over easy now. Not a whole lot came out. I was expecting more. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on and see if it'll crank. I don't think it will. I should probably... It uh, feels like that spark plug is trying to strip. Can't let that happen. Yeah, it's not going in there that well. Let's take a look at the threads on it. And the spark plug, it looks good. I can't tell without my glasses. There we go. I'll give it a quick crank, but I know I need to empty some of that oil out. having a hard time turning over. I'm going to drain some of the oil out and see what it does then. Alright, can you see what I'm doing here? Let me turn the camera around a bit. So here's the oil plug and it's pretty nasty. A lot of oil all over the place. And once I loosen that up, let's see, let me see what kind of. Ah, alright. So they got the standard uh, little cap you just twist it and pull it out but if it drains it's going to go all over the uh, <laughs> the transaxle here so I'm going to try to use this funnel hold it under here and see if I can get it to drain out down here into the pan Thick stuff. Look how thick that oil is. I might as well drain it all, you know? <laughs> this stuff is some old, thick, it looks like it's at least 40 weight. So while I do that, I hope I have some oil. have almost half a quart so we'll see if that's enough if it's 16 ounces and I'm sure it's cold and I'm sure this oil is sticking all over the the inside of the engine so and it's been draining for quite a while yeah that was a lot of oil in there well, okay, I'll let it drain. I'll come back once it's drained and I'll put some oil in it and we'll see if it cranks. I probably need to charge up the battery a little bit too. It seemed like it was starting to get weak. All right, so while the oil's draining, see if I can get to the battery. I can see the battery right back here. It doesn't look like it's whole big access, so I'm thinking if I take this front plate off, Alright, well here's 
here's all the stuff. Still kind of hard to get to the battery, but from here you can see. At least you can see here's where all the uh, man. What do they do to this thing? There's the fuse. Boy, they taped a lot of shit together here. And back there, there's the starter solenoid. So, I guess it's actually, uh, let's see if we can take the seat off and uh, get to the battery from there. But it's a rough ride just sitting on these blocks like that. There we go. Yeah. So there's clear access to the battery. 1118, so it's not that old. I'm sure it'll take a charge. I mean, it was cranking okay but uh, looks like it was starting to go down so while we take care of the oil I'm going to charge that baby up alright I think enough oil has come out of there still just barely dripping but uh, I think enough has come out when I put new oil in it and crank it up and get it all warmed up it'll it'll be a little better then I'll check it again but uh well, I don't know. Yeah, it's just a little drip like that. I'm going to go ahead and say that's good. All right. Well, Get this out of the way. Put some fresh oil in it. I don't know if you can see that. I guess it's nothing exciting. I'm just going to put some oil in. It's probably not enough, but at least it'll have something in there, you know. Definitely need some more oil, but what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna, I just wanna see if it makes any difference now that, uh, now that it's not so flooded with oil. Let's see if it'll crank up. Oh, it's turning much more easily, so. Let me go ahead and take the battery charger off. And see if that's enough. Well, at least it's cranking over now. You know what? I just looked at this. So here's the, the fuel pump. I guess I can take a look at the, the filter, take a look down here at the carburetor, but also I'm going to take the hose off of here on this fuel pump and make sure it's pumping gas through there. If it is, then I'll go straight to the carburetor. pump. I'm going to 
to see if it spits some gas out of there. And it is. That's good. Put this back on. Doesn't look that bad, does it? Well, there's definitely some gas getting in there. I can feel it all the way up here. But before I tear into the carburetor, let's check and make sure it's got spark. Alright, so we're back at the spark plug here. Who knows, it might be a bad plug for all I know. doesn't feel like it's uh, it's connecting here on this side. Just watch it and see if we see a spark. seen anything. So I don't know where the safety switches are on this. Obviously the seat has been disconnected and I don't see any safety switch on the seat down here and I have had the, the brake on so that should be covering that, right? The brake is locked. And I don't I haven't seen any any safety switch leading up to the seat unless it was part of this where all this stuff has been taped up. So what I could do, I guess when I'm looking here at the wires, you can see uh, this one's coming off of the stator. This one, it feeds around and goes to uh, the magneto. I wonder if it's showing a ground right now. Let me get my multimeter. So the key is on. And I don't think this should be showing the ground. Now let's turn the key off. Oops. I don't think I had a good connection there. No. Yeah, it's doing some weird stuff. I think uh, so. The safety switches—they're—they're they're not grounding out the uh, 
the magneto. So I think we have to replace the magneto. All right, so let's take this cover off. And we'll check the magneto out. Looks like it's pretty easy. A couple of bolts here. This comes off down here. I think there's two bolts under here. That'll come off. There's a little cover for the starter. And that's it. Just around here and here. Fuel pump will go back. Okay. Really easy. So let's do this real quick. And we'll take a look. There's the magneto. Take it off the spark plug. Let's disconnect those two. The bad thing is, I don't think I have a replacement. Well, there we go. I don't think I have a replacement, but I guess I can uh, take a look online, look at the specs, and see if this thing is uh, out of spec or not. All right, so I looked online, just a quick check. I saw one article where he's saying um, the coil, when you're reading from the positive to this end and the negative to the body of the coil, it should be between you know 2.5 and 5 kilo ohms. Huh. So this one, let's see if you can see that. So it's at the high end, but it is within spec. Isn't that, isn't that strange? So, decisions, decisions. So I looked online, I mean, I can get a replacement for, you know, from 12 to $15, somewhere in there, no big deal. Um, but if it's in spec and should be working, I mean, a new one's not going to do anything, right? Not anything different. But let's see. Let me think about this. So, I am at a dilemma here. Should I... Uh, that one's showing within spec. And I even have some extras. Not the right size, not the right cable size, all that good stuff, so I wouldn't be able to use it. 
and I just did a quick check and some of those are reading in at six and seven kilo ohms and uh, but I know they worked I took them off of running engines that were being scrapped right but what I'm thinking before I go order another one maybe I'll clean this one up you know make sure I get all the rust make sure all the contacts are there um, make sure everything's got a good connection first put it back on uh, and before I put all the case and all that good stuff on there I could still crank it and see if it'll start right but uh, see if I still have some spark put it that way so maybe that's what I'll do all right so you can see I cleaned off the poles there cleaned off the bottom here make sure it's going to be making good contact with the with the body of the motor make sure it's all going to be good and grounded make sure this is a good connection we'll test it now and if there's still no spark I'll get online check my resources <laughs> and make sure that uh, those specs are correct Yeah, now I'm seeing spark. Isn't that strange? Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. So maybe it was just a bad connection through here. Either where I just cleaned it off or I was playing with the wires down here where they connect on the other side. But uh, I saw a spark that time. I'm glad I checked the connections before I went and bought another one. Okay, so the battery went out, didn't know it, on my camera, so I went and swapped the batteries, but while I was doing that, what I did, I'm sorry you missed it, I, I'm, I could probably recreate it, but I took the spark plug out and sprayed some carburetor cleaner in there, uh, directly into the cylinder, put it up and cranked it over, and it sounded like it was a lot of short backfires right it was trying to fire but just nothing strong it just sounded a, a bunch of backfires if you ask me um, so what I'm thinking could be one of two things here uh, one I guess it, it could be the flywheel key right it could be just off a little bit where it's causing the valves to open and shut at the wrong time and uh, and that could explain why it's it has such a hard time on that initial turn when you're trying to start it um, or it could be the valves themselves you know uh, I guess the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to take this valve cover off check the valves make sure nothing feels like it's uh, like it's stuck open or something where there's not enough compression um, but I guess that's the next thing I'll do I'll check the valves first and if they check out good we can rule that out and then we move on to the flywheel key alright so let me take the spark plug off there I'm going to try to take this off real quick we have a chance of rain A lot of oil in there. I'm going to take this back off. I'm going to take this cover back off so I can take it off and rotate the the crankshaft a little easier. So let's rotate this around and see what it looks like. So that should be top dead center right there. Now this one's kind of loose. Not both. So I'll have to check them out. They might be a little off, 
but no big deal. The push rods look good. Alright, let's stick this in here. Yep, I was right on the money. So there's the very, very top. And you can see the magnet is just past. So, yeah, I don't know. It's so hard to tell because any slight, you know, movement of that uh, of that flywheel, if the key is cracked or something, and just a little bit will affect it. Um, but all these feel okay, right? They're moving freely. Feels like they're they're seating properly. I mean, all right. Well, I had to cover it up with a tarp there temporarily. I'm in between little. Uh, it's not raining hard, just sprinkles. Uh, but I think I have another half hour to an hour before it starts coming down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bolt off, take this off, and see if we can look down and see the flywheel key. Usually you can. Interesting. So, let me show you what I'm looking at. Yeah, so you can see the flywheel key right there. Oh, that was my camera strap. So it doesn't look that bad, does it? So the flywheel looks good. The flywheel key. Uh, the valves looked good except for just being a lot of oil in that little case. Um, I'm running out of options here. So... I guess what I could do... I'm going to put this back on and I guess what I could do, I, I could take this old spark plug off. I'll go ahead and replace it with a new one, but before I put it in, I'm going to spray some uh, carb cleaner in there and see if I can recreate the backfiring. I know we missed it before when my camera battery went out. So let's do that. I'm going to let me grab a spark plug. There we go. Alright, let's see what it sounds like. See, it tried. So it did a lot better this time than uh, than before. Before it just sounded like backfiring, but at least this time it actually tried to crank. Um, so now we gotta make sure that gas is getting down through the carburetor, right? Because um, it did try to fire up. Well, that's good. So I guess it's a what do you think? A combination? I mean, we checked the, the flywheel key, it was good. We checked the valves and uh, just drained all the oil out of there. We cleaned all the connections on the magneto and we put a new spark plug in. Uh, and then drained all the oil out of here so far so it wouldn't just be oil, oil sumped. Let me see if I can... So, so far just a lot of little things, you know. So now we're back to the carburetor. And you know what, when I'm not hearing when I turn the key on I'm not feeling the uh, uh, the fuel
fuel solenoid click. Let me show you. So there's the fuel solenoid and that's why I was touching it. I wanted to feel it and hear it. But I'm turning the key on and off and usually you hear it click. So I don't know if you can see that. There's 12.86. Turn the key off. Key on. So power is going through the cable, but I'm not hearing that fuel solenoid click, so it might be jammed. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to to see it down there while I'm there's the fuel solenoid. And Usually it's about a 13 millimeter or half inch. And you can see what I did with my wrench here. Um, did this a while back, so I made it, shaved it down. So it'd be very, very thin at the ends. So that I can get in there and get that sucker out. Usually a regular uh, wrench is too thick. And I got these, I guess they're, uh, the Pittsburgh, you know, the Harbor Freight brand. I got these because they are thin, and I still had to shave a little bit of it down. But uh, yeah, there's not enough room. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right, I got it. Okay, there was fuel in there. But I can feel it, it's not, it's not budging. You can put it back on, connect it here and, uh, All right, can you see that? I hope so. Yeah, see it's not, it's not moving back and forth at all. So, let me get a pair of pliers. I'll do something, I'll start first trying to rotate it. Um, Cause right now it should be extended um, well, let's see, because if it was stuck in the down position, it should have been sucking gas in, right? So, maybe the carburetor is still clogged. I'll, yeah, I might as well. <laughs> now that we're looking at it, we might as well take it off, because in the down position, like this, it should be uh, still sucking gas up. All right, well, I went ahead and yanked the carburetor real quick. Looks like I have another window of uh, decreasing drizzle. It's been on and off. This thing looks awfully clean. But we never know till we get down in here because, you know, this thing was... This is frozen, so there must have been a lot of sediment or something that gathered air at the bottom. So let's take the bowl off and see what it looks like. Let's take a look. And it looks awfully clean, doesn't it? But we need to look down in, into that little uh, in that little jet. I want to clean all this off without. Yeah, the gaskets look great too. So 
I know gas was getting in, so the float bowl is good. The float is good. Let me get my little nozzle cleaner. Yeah, I think there was some junk in there. I felt it when I, when I shoved the uh, Feels clean now. Well, I think. All right. Well, I've been working this back and forth, and it's it's not it's just not budging. You know. I got it to rotate, but I can't get it to pop out. And I'm getting impatient, but uh, but at least it's stuck uh, compressed, so it should still let gas in, right? A lot of guys I've seen they go on and shave this thing off. They just get a jigsaw and cut the pole, you know, cut that off. But in this case, it's stuck closed. If it was stuck open then it wouldn't let gas in, right? But with it stuck this way, because I even hooked it back up over there, uh, plugged it in, turned the key on and off, and it's not doing anything, so I think this thing is bad. Uh, but at least it should let gas in now. Then I'll replace this at a later date. So, I guess that's it. I'm going to put the carburetor back on. We'll get some fuel flowing and uh, see if that did the trick. And let's see. Let's crank it over. It might take a while for the gas to flow through. There's just a couple more things I want to do here. Um, well, I'm definitely going to clean all this up over here, get some cleaner and degreaser, soak it down, and uh, get all this crap out of here. I want to check the mowing deck and the blades over here and it looks like it's it's lopsided right but I think it looks lopsided because this this tire is flat um, but looking under here I mean even I mean it's a pretty heavy duty blade pretty thick and it actually feels like it's in good shape um, so I don't think there's any major problem but we'll find out once I uh, ooh, I need to get that out of the way I'll just tighten it up down here. Tighten that nut down and make sure that doesn't hit the pulley. Um, th that's one thing I want to, to, to listen for. You know, it will engage the blades and uh, listen to make sure there's no noise coming out from any of the pulleys. And, uh, and the tire, I think I'm going to take it off. Because the, the tire looks good, right? It doesn't look like it's there. There's no, doesn't look like it's worn down. There's no dry rot, anything like that. 
So it might be just a, either a puncture or um, maybe it's leaking down here somewhere, you know. But I think I'll air it up. I'll take it off, air it up, find where the leak is. Maybe we can patch it before I start spraying any slime or anything like that in there or try to put a tube in it. It's either the nozzle there or or there's a hole in the tire and maybe we can fix it. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get this soaking. So hopefully we can get all this caked up stuff. Uh, all that oil just got over everything. It was just spewing oil everywhere. But this stuff, I'll spray it on and let it soak. It's actually this stuff. It's it's pretty good. It uh, I'm putting it on full strength here. You can see it's already melting away some of the oil and crap that got all over everything and uh, like I said I'm doing it full strength here I like this stuff because it it, it it works with this thick stuff I'll just let it soak in before I hose it down uh, but you can dilute it like you know three to one um, or even six to one you know you have a weaker solution if you're gonna do fabrics and you know carpet cleaning or something like that and it really works pretty well and I think they also have this is just the regular um, spray on stuff they have some that's on aerosol and some that uh, that's the foamy stuff and and the foamy stuff for wheels and tires too so so they have a pretty good product lineup And best of all, it actually works. All right, that made a hell of a difference, didn't it? Sprayed it on and I just hosed it right off. I didn't even have to use a pressure washer. running really really rich
Well, it's running and uh, actually the mowing deck actually engaged pretty well. And when it was spinning, there was no vibrations. It's just the engine was just running really, really rich. You can see the, the discolor here on the grass. But you saw all the smoke there. So I'm looking back here, seeing a good way to get to the carburetor. I saw it when I had it off. Um, I did not bother to adjust anything at that time. But it's really, really hard to get to squeezing through here. Maybe I can take this top, this front plate off and reach through to the rear. Well, the battery's in the way. Uh, yeah, those are always tough to get to. I ran into the same problem with that one when I was trying to do any adjustments and it's right there by the exhaust I mean so your hands just it gets really hot <laughs> you know on that other engine the exhaust actually comes out right here at the bottom and goes around so that pipe was just right by your hand at least this one is coming out the other side but let me take a look at the carburetor and see if I can get to it. See what adjustments we need to make. Yeah, so I waited till the next morning to do the rest of this stuff, but uh, bright, shiny day today. But you can see all I did was uh, uh, adjust the carburetor. Uh, it was both uh, the air uh, fuel mixture was way off. It was really, really rich. Uh, so I backed off on the screw so it'd be more air getting into it and, uh, and then adjusted the idle. Um, other than that, it looks like it's uh, it's kind of funny. It, it it did backfire, just you know, like I was expecting it to. Uh, so once I replace that fuel solenoid, that should fix that problem. But other than that, it's good to go. Um, the mowing deck engaged great. It's just missing pieces now. Um, so I aired up the tire here, 
all it was was the valve stem, that little core on the on the valve stem. Uh, I just backed it out and tightened it back up, and boom, that was it. Uh, so it looks like we're we're missing pieces here. We're missing the chute, the plastic piece here, and we're missing the seat springs. But uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good. So I guess not really too bad. I was expecting a little easier and a shorter video. <laughs> but when they said it needed a little tweaking, it's like, my God, it needed tweaking everywhere. You know what I mean? Uh, the only tweaking we didn't have to mess with was with the mowing deck. But we did quite a bit on this little engine to, uh, to get it running properly. Uh, but I guess that is it. You know, once again, you know, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.